Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is City Talk. Uh, really, city, state, and national politics talk. We'll talk Obama, Christie, Cuomo, de Blasio, the 2014 U.S. Senate elections, the 2016 presidential candidates and issues, and more legalized pot. Here to talk all of this, talk are two of the wisest of political wise men, Ed Rollins and Hank Scheinkopf. Welcome back, gents. Ed, let me start with you. You're not a big Obama fan, and you said he was the worst president since Carter, or he was worse than Carter? I think he will evolve to be worse than Carter. Uh, give, me, give me his report card. His report card is he, he had two, two big issues. Uh, he inherited a war. Uh, he knew nothing about military or what have you, and basically uh, the, 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 the verdict is still out on whether the early withdrawal, what have you, is going to turn out to be a disaster. In all probability, after spending all the billions of dollars we have, both of those countries uh, will be in worse shape or certainly as bad a shape as they were when we went in. Now, and, and he deserves the, the blame? No, 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 no. no. But, but, you know, Richard Nixon got a lot of blame for Vietnam, and he certainly didn't start it, mm -hmm. and he ended it. Uh, then I think the other thing is obviously the economy, which he, again he inherited. And my issue with him is he was probably the least experienced man we've elected in modern times in both of these areas, economy and defense. And he didn't put people around him that basically understood those. Early on he had Gates who was helpful in the war, uh, Gates left. On the economic front he basically didn't listen to anybody. And the stimulus bill that he sponsored could have been an enormous help to this economy if it would have been a road building a transportation, a infrastructure, in which you tried to have some bipartisan support. It could have been a bigger amount. You could have retrained Americans, put them to work. What we did is we gave 25, 50 bucks to everybody who was getting a government check. That means nothing today. Hank? It's for, for people even on the left or people who feel a, a strongly Democrat in their bones, this is a very disappointing president. Uh, the health care uh, healthcare plan itself is, uh, is, a be is a boon to the insurance industry, but not to anybody else. He, having, having had the courage to stand up for single payer would have meant something, but he didn't. Taking on the insurance companies would have meant something, but he didn't. This is a passive president, and he will be forever known, probably, when it's written. I don't know how, where he's ranked on the scale of bad, I mean, right. but he certainly will be known as a president who took little advice and was very, clo very closed in, it was not someone who was expansive in his circle. And the, the ultimate tale will be told in foreign policy in Europe. And that is where he will look awful when, when, the, when the history is written. Someone did him a great injustice. It wasn't his term. It was someone on his national security staff when they said, lead from behind. If the American foreign policy be described worldwide as leading from behind is not what we're about. We have always led from the front. And the problem today is this is a president who's not respected by the world leaders. I mean, who's his allies? Uh, uh, who's, you know... You're, Estonia, very big. And, and, you're, and you're up against a very, very tough foreign policy leader in, in Putin, and Putin has basically looked in this guy's eyes and, and, and seen weakness. Ooh. Okay, let's move on. Uh, let's start with the 2014 uh, national election, Senate and House. Senate, 13 seats are up, 11 were held by, 11 by Democrats, and a lot of the Democrats are retiring. Republicans take over. They need six I'm not, seats. I'm not willing to concede that yet. But, but go ahead, uh, analyze. But, but if the election were here today, we'd be at four or five at a minimum, and possibly get the sixth. Uh, we've got a long ways to go, and a lot can happen. And you've got to beat a couple of incumbents. That's never easy. So I'm, I'm. We're going to have more Republicans for sure. Possibility a Republican majority. But two things have to happen. One is Mitch McConnell has to get reelected in, mm -hmm. in, in his home state is the, is the leader, which is really the only competitive Republican seat. And, yeah, and, 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 and Georgia really and, isn't and, even. Well, it, it, Georgia, Georgia, Georgia could is, could it could be. Could be. Yeah. And so you've, you've got to make sure you don't lose anything, and then you've got to take out a couple of incumbents. I would say the, the most vulnerable incumbent today is, is Arkansas uh, prior. prior. And, 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 I, and, uh, and Landry prior. Yeah, and, and that's going to depend a lot on whether the president signs the, uh, the, the, the pipeline bill. Right. Uh, if he doesn't sign the pipeline bill, I think she she's becomes more vulnerable. Okay. Hank? Uh, the Republicans certainly have a shot to take the Senate. There is no way likely that the Democrats could get close to taking back the House. 
this president's legacy will be uh, an awful one when it comes to partisan politics and protection of his own party, and that people are running away from the health care bill uh, and mass. The New York Times uh, had a story this past week, I think, talking about that extensively. Mm -hmm. That's something trend you've noticed for quite some time, where the rhetoric changes, politicians are showing no courage and bolting from their own party because they know something's wrong here. Can the Democrats win the Senate? Uh, yeah, they can. Can the Republicans take it back? They can. And will it be close? You bet. Three seats are probably at risk off the top. I agree with that. I think that Landry's in trouble anyway. Yeah. Pryor is certainly in very serious trouble. North Carolina's a toss. At Montana. Best. Montana's West a Virginia. problem. West Virginia's and, a problem. And South, and South Dakota. And South, South Dakota. Dakota. Those states that, would, that there, where there is, where there's real money, where, the, where the cost, by the way, the cost per point for television is not as high as in other places. Yeah. It makes it easier for the Republicans yep. to win them yep. because the money that they can raise versus what the Democrats might be able to raise is much more significant. House, gain seats, lose seats, you know, reps? It, 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 it's it, local. It, it, it's, it's local. Uh, there's a, quite a few Republicans now that are stepping out, making some seats a little more competitive. I agree with Hank. There's no way we're going to lose it. Uh, the critical thing here is here's, here's going to be the slogan. Republicans are going to run on Obamacare and what a failure it is. President and his team are going to run on redistribution of wealth and inequality. I don't think arguing for a minimum wage across the country in these districts is going to basically knock any Republican out. Fighting for Obamacare against Obamacare may help them in some of these, uh, these other the states. The Republican mistake will be to run against Obamacare only. All these issues have to be made local. I mean, Tip O'Neill, it's kind of become cliches. All politics is local. But, you know, when you take data and you're doing a campaign, you're not taking data from a, from a state nearby. You're taking data from the state you're in. Mm -hmm. These things have to be made local and personal question is, how do you do that? The other issue that is troubling to me is the racialization of American politics again, which is very significant. Uh, whether I don't think the Republicans have this. Maybe they don't have it intentionally. Certainly my, some of my good Republican friends would never admit to this, nor are they trying to do it. But uh, as blacks have become the most uh, reliable portion of the American electorate for Democrats, um, they're becoming much more isolated because Obama is is not popular among the Democratic electorate mm -hmm. at large. Mm -hmm. Were he more popular, the numbers would have been higher in the last presidential election. And what matters in midterm elections is who turns out. Right. Uh, Sixty percent of the eligible voters turn out in presidential, forty percent. Yep. Traditionally, it is white. Traditionally, it is older voters. Yep. Yep. Uh, Higher socioeconomic and, and, status. And, 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 and women have been a very significant part of the Democratic Party. Older women basically are very concerned about Obamacare, and the only place I disagree with you is I think candidates will attempt to make the Obamacare and neighbors and doctors and community people yep. losing small hospitals in the rural areas, what have you, are going to end up being closed if, because if of you, Obamacare. If you make this a, a middle income, lower middle, let's do it this way. If you make this a blue, white, blue collar, working class argument in states throughout the country about Obamacare, that become the face of the loss becomes someone who is like the people there. That's what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. Then it changes. But to go slash and burn Obama on this no, no, is wrong. I, 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 that would that would not help the yeah, Republicans. Okay, so the, so what the <coughs> bumper the bumper sticker has to be something other than quote not Obama. What is it? Uh, you know, I, I think it's the old. Are you better off? Uh, I mean, okay. I, th I think at the end of the day, I mean, it, it, that's been used and 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 it and, used and we know who and well you use it again. And you, but you but you have to basically. I think the, the I think the weakness of the Republicans today is 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 what is, what is their alternative, uh, and the Ryan bill that's coming. Talk about it. Uh, Paul Ryan is one of the smartest Republicans we have. He's he's a thoughtful guy. He's a Kemp protege. And I was a Jack Kemp. I was Jack Kemp's chairman when he ran for president. Uh, Jack Kemp was a very thoughtful uh, guy who basically tried to remake the Republican Party, uh, and and would have I think if he would have lived or been been successful in his mm -hmm. presidential bid. At the end of the day. Uh, what, what I was about with Reagan is making the Republican Party, people who work should do better than people who don't work. Uh, and I still think, not that slogan because it sounds very, very derogatory, but, it's, but, it's, but, it's, but, but the overarching theme of that is that people today are worried about the future. They're worried about the future for their kids. People have done exactly the right thing in life and our generation are basically at 50, 60, 70 are having a hard time. And they know their kids and grandkids are going to have a harder time. Ahead, I think they need to say something like, give, Amer give me my America back. Give me back my America. Because that's what people are starting to feel, that the America that they thought about, that they thought they'd grow old into, they'd become seniors into, and lead a decent life is disappearing in front of everybody in our age bracket who's in their early 60s who's out of work is not going back to work again. Tell me. I know. I they, know. They folks. know that. Sure. That's, that's real. And by the way, when the health insurance premiums come in and they're 26% higher for small businesses over the last couple of years, it's a serious thing. Okay, advise the president. 
advise the president? I would have advised the president. Uh, I wish I'd been there about a year and a half ago. I would have said, listen, look into Putin's eyes and say no. That would be your number now, one. Now, we're doing now. What do you tell him now? What I tell him now is I tell him to uh, wake up about Iran instantly because they haven't disappeared. And it's only a couple of years before the cash that he's now given them through getting rid of the sanctions, they're going to start to collect. We'll build a blue water fleet, as Jim Fallis predicted the Chinese would do 15 years ago, and they did. The Iranians are going to do the same thing. It's only a matter of time before those boats are off the east coast of the United States. This is serious stuff. In other words, I would say, Mr. President, be serious. You are the leader of the free world. This is not a back, this is not a behind the scenes role. Be a star in your own show. You're not the star now. Okay, that's foreign policy. Talk of domestic, oh, go ahead, Ed. The, the point, is that wrong, Ed? No, 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 absolutely not. The point, the point Hank is, is making are, are so very, very valid. Long range planning is what Putin is doing in the Soviet Union, uh, Russia, not the Soviet Union, it wants to have the Soviet Union again, but it's in, in Russian expansion. It's what the Chinese-Japanese battle back and forth is. This isn't gonna happen next week or next year. But 20 years from now, these are two powers that are going to basically uh, go at it somewhere along the line. Long-range planning in America is lunch next week. Uh, we, we don't think beyond that capacity. And, and I think to a certain extent, whether it's our budgetary process or any of the rest of it, and, and we keep thinking we can keep rolling up these debts every year. You know, it's, it's, we're an $18 trillion, which is almost five times the budget uh, right today. We think we can keep borrowing money. We think everything is okay. Uh, and we have to basically tackle these entitlements, and we have to basically, and, and no, I, no Republican will say this, we have to somehow enhance our revenue. Uh, the president could have done this with some bipartisan support on a tax overhaul, uh, a tax reform in which you can close some of the corporate loopholes, you can basically uh, lower rates, make, make working people keep more of their money, and people who basically have the ability to be more productive, be more productive. Go back to the Ryan budget in terms of its potential downsides. Well, the, the, down, the downside, it's a complicated budget. It's a 99-page document. It's basically, uh, it talks about uh, re reducing uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the entitlement programs. Uh, the counter to that, which is the old argument that, that Democrats have made against us before, there is a big increase in the defense budget, uh, which we probably need to take care of the troops are coming back and, and the military that's been worn out. But at the same time, it's it's a, it's a fictitious budget. It's 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 a it's a it's a resolution. There's nothing going to happen because you've got to change the laws to undo entitlements. It's not like sitting in the appropriation committee and saying we're going to take out X billions of dollars. Right. You've got to change the law. If you're entitled to something, you're going to get it, uh, and that's a very tedious process. So rather than with the tread interest. So rather than rather than fight the the, the verbal battle, the intellectual battle uh, on emotional issues, uh, you know somehow we we need to get to what's one, two, three years here, and basically try and build some allies long-term to basically uh, tackle some of these entitlements. Talk about the issue of the Republican Party itself. I've heard it say if, they, if the Republicans win in 2014, meaning you know, hold the House, maybe even expand and take over the Senate, there are still real deep structural issues. And Democrats, I think, are hoping that you know, Republicans will go on an orgy of self-congratulation and fail to deal with uh, the demographic they issues that we're they, talking they about. They did it when I was there in 90, they did it in 95. And when they shut down the, they shut down the, uh, the government. And they went in this orgiastic, this, uh, or, or Gingrich went on an orgiastic, uh, self-congratulatory set of behaviors that ultimately sunk the party, made sure that Bill Clinton was reelected, and uh, did a whole bunch of other damage. Now? I mean, what, what can happen now, now? It's more difficult because the coalition that they have is as problematic as the coalition the Democrats have. Why? The battle between evangelical uh, in the evangelical world between uh, denominational and non-denominational Christians is very significant. The demographic shifts in the South are very significant, mm -hmm. not small, but significant. Mm -hmm. okay? The fact that they can't get anything done. You know, people don't mind if you have a polarized government, what they do, but they expect something to happen. Right. They expect partisanship, but they expect outcome. That's, you know, scholars have written about this extensively. Sure. They, if they're in charge, they have a, a significant onus to accomplish because they've got to prove that what a Barack Obama and under his control or in his Senate, which he will be blamed for, that there's something different going on here. They have not yet proven the case that they can actually govern. That's a different issue. We've had three, we've had three elections in which we had an opportunity to take back the Senate. I totally agree with Hank. If, if for some reason we win the Senate uh, in this cycle, we have two years to do something right. with the House and the Senate. Right. And, and you have a president who's going to veto uh, any kind of Obamacare alteration or whatever, right. or, or most of the entitlement reform. But you've basically got to put forth some alternatives and, and make the Democrats and, and the president be the bad guy if they, do, if they do that veto. Because in 2016, not only, again, we're in a presidential election, 
Uh, Democrats may very well have Hillary at the top of the ticket. will energize women and a lot of Democrats. Uh, if that occurs, we have a long drawn out primary process to whoever ends up being the nominee. And the shift takes place in the Senate again where the majority of the senators that are up are Republicans and it could quickly bounce back. My sense is we've got a, we've got a stagnant economy for the foreseeable future. We're going to basically be living with unemployment of 7% for a long time. Uh, and, and more important than the unemployment number alone is the 17, 18% underemployed. There are a lot of people who Hank and I talk about who've mm -hmm. gone back to work yep. and they're underemployed and they're working in a, and working in a Walmart or somewhere like that. And their lifestyle, they did all the right things. Yep. They're 50, 60 years old, did all the I right things, bought the house, yeah. the whole nine yards, mm -hmm. and, they're, and they're basically, the, the, the world has cheated them and they now think, my God, I gotta work till I'm 80. Right. Ed, Ed, and I, Ed and I have had this discussion about underemployment. If you look at the Reagan elections, by the way, when Reagan began to misunderstand the underemployment number, the numbers started to move against him. Okay, the underemployment thing is very significant because it has a class bias, it has a class mm -hmm. consciousness to it that is overwhelming. The Republican of the future, to be successful, if they're as successful as they think they're going to be, has to be a, a, almost a center-right populist who is, a, who is very patriotic and who talks about the income gap. Okay. Ooh. Let's let, now let's look at potential fields out there. The Democratic field, it's Snow White and the X number of dwarfs. If Hillary goes, is there an, is there, is there an Obama there to challenge her, or does she? I, I don't, I, I'm, not, I'm not the Democrat. No, I understand. Uh, well, uh, my, and and my, Democrat, my Democrat friends all argue with me. I think she basically, uh, if she, I don't think a Republican can beat Hillary. I don't think another Democrat can beat Hillary. I think Hillary can beat Hillary. Uh, and that would be my worry if I was if I was. I, I think that's 100% accurate. Right. Listen, there's a generational shift going on in America right now. She is of my generation, of Ed's generation, of your generation. Thank you. By the way, there's a whole bunch of other people coming up, okay? And, uh, and <laughs> they're going to look at this very differently. Yesterday's successes are not what they're interested in. They are frightened too. They may do, they may say not, but you know what? The news every day is the same. They go through the want ads. They go look for jobs. They get online. They do all the things they're doing to try to build the future. Not so simple. Mm -hmm. and the income gap and, this, and the social class gap is growing by day. Networks are the way to get to the future, not, not achievement or accomplishment. Okay, so wh what does that tell us about the 2016 Democratic race for the nomination? And, what, and then we want to turn to the Republicans. Martin O'Malley, um, a decent guy, certainly connected throughout the country, would be... Uh, would be a, a candidate. Um, Catholic too. Catholic, very important, I think, very important right. because of the nature, the way, the way. Who else? I mean, there's Biden's mention. There's Biden, Biden, a Catholic, also from Scranton, Pennsylvania. Right. Not insignificant. Right. Elizabeth uh, Warren. You have Elizabeth Man. Warren, who I think is significant because she represents in a balkanized political system where there is no center anymore, where the point of meeting, and you know, this, this whole discussion about the destruction of civic culture is real. Right. There's no cent there are no central places for meeting. In a balkanized culture like, in a balkanized political culture like this, Elizabeth Warren is absolutely in the right place. She's on the left. What about, what about uh, our, our Jeb Bush, by the way, would be on the right, with Scott okay, Walker probably talk as, about as, that. as a what vice about, presidential nominee. What about Andrew Cuomo? Um, look, I'm a fan, so, um, I, you know, I, I have to be careful but, what I say. I'm a fan. Would he, would he fit? He'd be a terrific candidate. He's a lot of what Republicans in the, in the heartland might be looking for. Someone who can control government, control spending, uh, and, and act as a conservative. Well, a, a Republican acquaintance of mine who's a local official said that uh, uh, Cuomo was the best Republican governor since Pataki won. Question, but you've got to have an opportunity. You see, yeah. politics is about right. opportunities. Go. Now. There is no opportunity in the present environment with Hillary Clinton there. Sure. Okay. And I think that goes for everybody. I think O'Malley's an ally. I think that right. uh, Elizabeth Warren yep. could be a fringe. I mean, this this would be like the perfect time for Howard Dean type of a candidate. Sure. Who, who's, who's that? Who's that real uh, progressive? Uh, uh, but I I don't see it. I think if she makes her decision, you know, within the next year and, and gets into the game, it's going to be tough for anybody else to right. get. I agree. And she freezes everybody she by she, not. She freezes. She freezes right. anybody else. All she has to do is wake up everybody yeah. and breathe. Yeah. I mean, that's right. an extraordinary right. position to but be in. But she also has right. a good campaign. Go ahead. Talk, and, talk to and, Republicans. And our and our side, uh, you know, we our process is not like the Democratic process. We do not have a, 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 pre, a populist, uh, and I don't mean populist. We don't have a proportional way we choose. We want 
we want to go to winner take all. Yep. We want to, and, and unfortunately, what happens when you've got seven, eight, nine, ten good candidates in there, you really ought to draw the process out. I, I argue with people who say, I've got to get it over quick. You get it over quick, you get a McCain or, or, or someone like that that's, that's sort of untested. I would argue that if you've got all these good candidates, let it go. Let, let it be proportioned. Build, build some strength, and by the time you get to the end, ah. by the time you get to the end, you've got a viable candidate. I think because we have, we have a bunch of no names, with the exception of Jeb Bush, uh, who, who basically is getting a lot of attention today, and, and, and Governor Christie, who obviously is having his problems. I think a guy who I would possibly, uh, I, I'm not going to support anybody, but I'm, who I think would be very, very important to us is Scott Walker. If Scott Walker, we need to get to a fiscal message. The future of the Republican Party is not the social issues. We will lose young voters. We, we, have, we have the Christian right, they're ours. We're not going to basically walk away from the issues. But to stress the issues over and over and over again, which you have to do when you start in Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, which is another part of our system here. I mean, you've got to be more right-wing, more extreme on these issues. Where the real issue is a fiscal issue. And these young people today, who are all mostly Democrat voters today, or at least vote Democrat, uh, my sense is they're going to be most worried about the economy than anybody. They're going to come out of colleges with debt. You teach kids every day mm. that worry about their future. Uh, we all graduated from college. We went a generation better than our parents. Uh, uh, economically and what have you, there's no guarantee that they have anything but a lot of debt when they come out and no jobs. So my sense, if we talk about the fiscal issue, Scott Walker has done that. He has, has, a, has a billion dollar surplus. Uh, uh, he's he's going to have another tough re-election because of the state. But my sense is he could be a very credible candidate talking about fiscal issues. Sure. And he, but it's going to take time for him to grow, which, which is, once again, the, 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 the key here is the four first. Nevada is unique, and I wish it wasn't there. But Iowa is, is, is one you've got to go get tested in because mm -hmm. of all the, the media attention. It doesn't mean a thing right. in the final analysis, but you've got to get tested. And, and then, then you go to New Hampshire, which is traditional, and South Carolina, which is unique. I think if you want to be a viable candidate as a Republican, you've got to win two of those first four. I mean, if you want well, you got to not get killed in South Carolina. You've got to get right. killed well, in I mean, South that, Carolina. Yeah, South Carolina is a killing field. It's right. a, it is a killing field. And I, and I think to a certain extent, uh, so what I tell candidates who, who, who want to run, you've got to have $100 million to get in the game. Uh, that's a lot of money, but that's what it is. It's going to be a hundred wow. million dollars. You're talking about it. Uh, so we spent entirely in 1996. Right. This is the That was the budget in 1996. Wait a minute, Hank. This is the ante for the election. Yeah, but you just, you just think of the states, the states you've got to win. How much did Reagan spend in 1980? We had, a, we, had a, we put public money, and we had basically a check for $40,400,000, <laughs> and we won 49 states. We had a national TV. Uh, we had enough no. money. Uh, the problem with the public financing was there wasn't enough money to run a contested primary. Sure. Uh, a, 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 you know, Obama would have gotten ninety million dollars last time sure. if he hadn't opted out. You can run a national campaign media, yeah. but it's not spending eighteen thousand points per day right. in uh, in places like Ohio or whatever. Sure. We're running an eight state campaign, and we will again. It'll be a two. I, it'll be it'll be a two billion dollar two billion dollar aside presidential race. And then we're, we're in we're, the era, era narrowing battleground state election. Sure. We haven't had a real. When was the last time there was a truly sort of national, non-locked-in election? It's not in the TV age because you can't afford right. to spend the okay. money. You would, have to do, you would have to be up on television in places you don't need to be in. Why spend money in states where you're polling? And this is, the ad, this is the, where, the, where the permanent campaign and everything attached to it has real, real importance to explain what goes on. You're not going to spend money in states you have no opportunity right. to win. Right. Why waste your money? Right. You've got to go to places you And, and three win. of the four biggest states are those states that aren't competitive. Uh, New York and California and, and, and Texas. Texas. And Florida's the, the fourth, and it's the, it's the swing. It's the one right. that everybody goes And then Ohio start. down a little bit down win the line. Win Texas, excuse me, win Ohio and Florida, go home. Nice. Right. I mean, the... <laughs> I, I don't even see TV ads. They fly in, raise money. I think that's what Democratic candidates are going to be doing in the Senate election with Obama. You know, raise me money, but don't don't get. Well, I'm not even sure he he can raise the money. And you, you mentioned Biden earlier. Biden is going to Biden is getting the mission to go out and be the candidate. I don't think Biden can basically. He can't step away from. He's not that strong a candidate. As, and and I and I think I think we would love to run against Biden. We'd beat Biden like a drum. Who who would you like to run against if you're the Democratic consultant? Who do you want to run against? A legitimate candidate. The unions will take care of Scott Walker. You think? Well, they'll spend uh, whatever it takes. And he's got to get reelected, so he'll have one more. Tough they one. will. They yeah, will, well, they that's will true. If he doesn't whatever. get reelected, you don't have to worry about that. You just do independent expenditures. Get the unions to do independent expenditures and just beat the devil out of them. Okay. Who else? Well, who else they got there? Jeb Bush? 
Jeb Bush. See, see, I, I think Jeb Bush is a lot more difficult than people think. Oh, I, I think he's. And difficult. I think he, I think he's very difficult. Yep. And I don't. I, I don't think this idea about the name has much credibility. What is What is important to note is his own record, which is for a Republican governor in a state like that is pretty darn good. In a place where you have every kind of trend known to mankind is within that state of Florida in 14 media markets where, you, where you've got to be at your best. He's well regarded. And he came out of that alive. And he, and go ahead, talk about he, he's, he's also an extremely competent, he was a very competent governor the eight years he was governor. He could have been a senator, he could have stayed on the national mm -hmm. scene. You know, unfortunately... He got his brother elected president. Uh, well, his, 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 his brother got elected president, and that became part of the, 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 the albatross. Uh, although, as people reflect back a little bit on, on George W., he's getting a little better, a little better mark. I think... Well, in, in course, about 50 years, it'll I, be I, well, that's what that's, that's way... <laughs> see, what happens, what happens, yeah. Yeah, what happens is you and I basically live in the game daily. Yeah. These guys analyze political scientists. They analyze what, what went on. Even though they weren't in the room, they analyze what went on. Yeah. And then the historians, 50 years from now, say, well, that's nice. Well, the, None the, of you knew what really happened. The, really the, the best is all that, the revisions. That was pretty good. That was, that was, that, that was excellent. That was, that, was, that, was very, that was very good. Yeah, thank the you. The best example is the revisionist history now about World War I. It's 100 uh, years ago. Now we know why the whole thing got screwed right. up. No right. one explained it before. No, we had no, all figured no, out. No, revision, right. revision is wonderful. <laughs> Matchup. Hillary, you you believe that if Hillary becomes the Democratic nominee, she's unbeatable? Well, what she will do is she'll energize women. Uh, and women are very, very important. They're 53 percent of the, the electorate. Uh, just as Obama in, in both of his elections where it was able to energize African American, uh, other, other uh, minority voters in a vote in disproportionate numbers, my sense, my, my daughter's a freshman. Uh, at Mount Holyoke, uh, she said everybody's up there for Hillary, including her. Uh, All right. Her. And, and so my sense is there's no other Democrat going to be able to put the same coalition together that Obama did. She can create a new one mm -hmm. and the energy right. being uh, among women. And, okay. and if she was a man, I don't mean this in a, in a derogatory way, uh, we all have to be very sensitive. Even with her credentials, which are very unique, she wouldn't be anywhere near as strong. The fact that she could be the first woman president. Mm. And people, women want that. That puts her over the threshold. I think that's a very good analysis, and I think it has tremendous value. And I think women, women, gender is the issue. Ooh, so demography will be destiny, whether it, if, if not racial, ethnic demography, well, in a country, gender in a demography. In a country that's divided, as in this country is divided, geographically, ethnically, age-wise, the whole bit, the demographics, if you can get 53% uh, of the electorate energized to where a certain segment who traditionally wouldn't vote there makes a different decision it's three or four or five percent is a big difference in an election absolutely okay absolutely gentlemen my thanks to both of you i learned something i mean I, did, for you to say that hillary clinton would be that strong but, but the other thing she does is she she doesn't make the bush name so negative uh, it gives bush right. Gives Bush the opportunity. If That's he gets very a, smart. He gets the, That's uh, good. He gets you the get the last word. He gets That's the nominee. He, he gets to have a year to be to campaign side by side. And it'll probably be a more genteel campaign than it would have been if somebody else's. Yeah, that's possible. That's good. we got to stop, unfortunately. My thanks to Ed Rollins and Hank Schoenkopf for their political insights. Join me next week when my guest will be Professor of Education Pedro Negrera here on CUNY TV. Excellent job, guys. Thank you. Hello, I'm Doug Musio. Let us know what you think about this show. You can reach us at cuny.tv. When you get there, click on the bar that says contact us and send your email. Whatever it is, thanks, no thanks, obnoxious, do it. Send it. <laughs>